Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 180. Joining me this week is a man signing to his dog. It's Jake Terrio. Hello. <laughs> and a man in a green minty room. It's Ian Gibson. That's a lot of sign for hello. <laughs> I never learned. It's my own special version. It's pretty. It's the easiest one. It's just this. You just wave at him. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Oh, um, boy. Folks, we're here to talk about uh, video games and the news and there with the in. Uh, but first, we have an empty chit chat section that has nothing in it because nobody wants to chit or chat. Um, that's just the way. It's the way the cookie crumbles these days. Uh, these Gen Zers uh, and Gen Alphers, they don't want to. They don't want to do it. Like the yep. puppet, Alf the puppet. Uh, oh, we should uh, call him Nanu Alf's Nanu. From now on. Uh, that's is, good. Is no, that's Mork and Mindy. Klaatu, I know. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> Klaatu Barada Nikto. Uh, Gort. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all we have. So we're going to move in. Uh, do you guys have anything to talk about? Nope. Games? Video games? You want to talk about video games? Oh, yeah. We can talk about anything. The world's our oyster, guys. Do you know what oysters are? Let's go back to talking about Biden. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt a little... Uh, actually, I do... Uh, eh, it's a little related to Biden, which is... My in-laws, like I go to a lot of like family events and stuff and there's like family friends there. And a lot of these are some older people who are Republicans and stuff like that. And it's weird because as me, myself and I, I don't think I've ever would describe myself as political or like if someone asked me, I, I mean, I've never answered like, am I a Democrat? Sure. Like, I, it just doesn't come up. I don't care about politics that much. I never talk about politics. I rarely voice my opinion on any social issues um, other than, like, fuck Nazis. But every time, like, a boomer or one, one of these people in these circles wants to talk to me about politics, they're like, well, yeah, I know since you're a Democrat, you might not agree with that. And I'm just like, every time I'm just like, am, am I? Like, like, not politically, but it's just like, who... Did someone like tell you? Like, I'm just so confused. What? Like, is it just like because I'm young? Um, is it because I, you know, I, I take out my gun and I show them and I say, no, I'm a <laughs> and I shoot him in the head. <laughs> no, I just think yeah. it's weird um, because it almost, I, I don't know, it just, it just feels weird because it suddenly like the conversation becomes political and I'm like, no, I was having casual chats with these people so casual social interactions you don't need to bring the d word into it or the r word or like you we can talk about like history without bringing that stuff up you know uh well that was like yeah. two or three years ago when i was i can't remember where i was driving to or from somewhere with my dad and we were talking about something and he was like well hold on i have a question you're woke right explain this to me <laughs> <laughs> okay dad oh god oh it's like god. i i can't imagine myself ever having a political sign in my lawn unless it was like my child running for office or like yeah something like that i i don't know i just i i not that i don't think people should do that but it's just like i i don't even i don't care enough to even you don't tell you don't people care I support. yeah like I, oh, I'm, I I'm similar to that in a way, but the problem is that I'm so nihilist about the whole system that I, I cannot possibly support any of the parties oh, <laughs> or yeah, the candidates because it's like I see right through it. I see the Machiavellian. I see you don't care about what you're saying. You just want power. And I'm yeah, like, exactly. I don't, I don't want any of this. I uh, the lesser two evils is not paying attention to politics. Uh, yeah, I actually it's it's funny you say that the lesser of two evils because I had a I had a. a I would say heated, but not an argumentative or like explosive conversation with my family for like 30 minutes after the, the first presidential debate this year. And it was basically they were like, yeah, Biden's terrible. He's got to drop out, but I'm still going to vote for him or whoever the Democrats pick because it's better than Trump. And I'm like, I'm like, why? It's not an either or. And they're like, what do you mean? It's an either or. And I'm like, I'm like, there's other people on the ballot. And even if you don't like them, write it in or don't vote like don't fall for the 
fucked up two party system. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to, right? Because you're throwing your vote away. And I'm like, no, stop fucking <laughs> voting for one of the two parties just because you're you feel like those are your only options. It's not like like a majority of the problems with America's political system are because we've let it be controlled by a two party system. And that's fucked, right? Like, I'll just give a shout out to France's uh, France's electoral system. If you're not familiar with it, they have a first past the post system. <clears throat> I'm not an expert on this, but basically what happens is they had uh, a parliamentary election and they have a first round election. And, uh, you know, you vote for which candidates you want, et cetera. And if no one party gains a majority of the parliament, then it goes to a second round. The idea being you need a majority of the parliament in order to form a government. So because no party gained a majority of the first round, it went to a second round vote like two weeks later. And essentially the far right gained a huge amount of seats, but not a majority. The far left lost a lot of seats, or I should say the moderate left lost a lot of seats. And the moderate left, in order to maintain power, had to suddenly make a lot of deals with far left and communist party, et cetera. Like, because it wasn't an either or decision, they had to compromise their beliefs and make deals with opposing political parties to get enough power to then rule as a combination of political parties. And it's like, Oh, fuck, that's really cool, actually. You know, you're having to actually make political deals and compromise in order to maintain some sense of power as opposed to, oh, it's us or them. And when we're in power, we just have to make you mad at the other guys. And when they're in power, we just have to keep you mad at them, et cetera. And it's just like, fuck the two-party system. So I, I feel you. It's it's part of that whole, are you a Republican or Democrat? And I'm going to sign you into one of two parties and know everything about you based on that. And it's like, no, nah, man, the spectrum's much broader than that. We yeah. gotta have a system that represents And that. also, like, not to further talk about this for the rest of the episode, but, like, I always feel like people say that before saying, like, something where they're clearly on the wrong side of it, and uh, like like women's health, for example. And um, they're just like, well, you're a Democrat because you yeah. might agree with this. And, and I've never actually had this conversation when it comes to women's health. But it's just always just like, well, no, I kind of I kind of just think that. I don't think that because I, I could be a Democrat. I just think like people should be in charge of their health you yeah. know or like we shouldn't separate children from their parents and immigration but like crazy me yeah um, oh, crazy when me. i always talk funny where they're like oh yeah. it's because you're a democrat i'm like no because i think i'm a decent human being is the main reason yeah um and whoever that happens but to I line just, up with i'll be okay with like i feel like abortion is the perfect example of both sides will stake a claim and the democrats in particular will claim to be a pro-choice party but they have done jack fucking shit for abortion rights the last several decades, right? They just said, we have a very weak as fuck Supreme Court decision called Roe v. Wade. We've had control of the House and Senate multiple times and the White House, and we're never going to codify that into law. They had plenty of fucking opportunities yeah. to do it, and they never did it because they want to campaign on it. They don't want to actually solve the issue. They just want to campaign on it. Well, and it's like, it's fucked and biden has already like started rolling out his like first 100 day plan i'm like friendo you have already <laughs> been alive. in office for yes, yeah more than 100 days yes yeah it's like a thousand day where's your fucking thousand day plan from your first yeah. term you idiot i wish it was yeah. first 100 days uh if you don't do your plan you get knocked out and the runner up gets to be president for 100 days God, yes and then if they can't do it there's a, just a total revote <laughs> It'll be yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, I plan to eat a bowl of cereal in my first hundred days. Uh, and it'll be I mean, just that's all you got to do to stay president. It become like a fun, fun game. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, all politics aside, it's time to go to a medium that has no politics. Uh, video games aren't woke. Damn right. Thankfully, <laughs> um, they have hot women as the antagonists and ugly fatties as pro antagonist i said that backwards but it doesn't matter because we're getting woke speaking of woke video games jake tell me about the games you've been playing um uh well i guess uh yeah another crab's treasure um from agro crab is woke because uh <laughs> it's about it's about uh taking out pollution in the ocean Mm -hmm. That's when you slay a boss, like in a Dark yeah. Souls game or something. It says like pollution cleansed <laughs> or pollution scoured. Oh. I think is what it says. Ooh. Um, so yeah, in the a, ocean. 
it's pro environmentalism. Big enough for it. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> another woke it? game from the woke left. Now, um, do you, yeah. as a as a fellow Elden Ring, as a fellow tarnished Elden Lord, may I may I say, mm. sir? Mm -hmm. Um, I, there's two Elden Lords on this podcast, um, and you know it makes sense. But as a fellow Elden Lord, uh, do you do you like the combat system in uh, Another Crab's Treasure? Um, I have only beaten the first like major boss, uh, or like those the, the Lance guy, Lance Lobster. Yeah, the Lance Lance Lobster. Um. That's the only one I've beaten so far. So I don't I know I've seen like um from other reviews of it and like clips of it that I've seen, I know there's a more uh in depth there's like more combat variants once you get like more shells with unique abilities and, and mm -hmm. whatnot. Um so I don't feel like I've I've really gotten a full grasp of it yet. Um I think it's fine so far what I've played. Uh it, I keep finding myself like for no apparent reason i i can't explain it but i keep finding myself like pressing the wrong buttons because i'm like oh it feels like the attack should be this button instead mm -hmm. of this button um and so i kept getting myself into trouble with that but um yeah i mean it's fine so far i like the certainly the the vibe of it it's very quirky and and fun um it doesn't feel as like I know it's it's been pitched as a in the souls like family. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel quite that challenging if there is like an official threshold of challenge for what makes a game a souls like. Um, but um, I'm gonna stick with it. I'll get back to okay. you. Yeah, I I kind of fell off after I beat that first boss, and it just like it just didn't feel good. I don't know. I kept never like getting the buttons down, and it just felt a little. I don't know. It felt not. It felt not polished. I guess not polished. It felt clunky. I think is the word I want to use. I have. I have heard some complaints about how a little bit of the movement and like the iframes is a little off to people. So I. I think where it's like there's little bits of the combat and movement that feel off just enough to be like, uh, yeah. You know. I will say I don't. I don't know if this is the case, um, but it does feel maybe a little more. Um, sluggish might not be the right word, but they are certainly the the physics of the game are certainly designed to emulate the feeling of being underwater at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay, I could so see you're that. a little bit your jump your jumps a little so it feels floaty, like Dark Souls. Um, and your dodge is a little kind of more loosey goosey Floaty. than yeah. Um. So, but I, I don't know. I need to get a, a little deeper. No, you might be right with that. It just, I don't think it was for me. It. But I, I will agree. I did thoroughly enjoy the like setting, like story stuff that's happening, like the quirkiness of it, especially that whole intro with uh, them. Where what were they doing? Repossessed. Repossessing the, his shell. I thought that was very funny. So, yeah, I'm glad you're going to stick with it because I do want to hear more about it. Mm -hmm. uh, what else have you been playing, sir? Um, I've been plugging away at Bellatro. I finally beat my first uh, gold chip stake oh, wow. on um, uh, Checker Deck. No, I can't remember. I got close on the Checker Deck. I think it might have actually been the um, the 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 Plasma Deck, which uh, uh, evenly distributes your chips and your multiplier. Um, oh yeah gotcha. i think it was with that one i i would have to check to be sure but um uh yeah i got the update i don't know i guess i like hadn't downloaded the update or whatever that added in um at the higher difficulties it added in limited time jokers ones Ooh. that are only for like you only get it for four turns or for three turns or whatever and then you have to sell it because it disables itself and uh -huh. then there was another variable that it introduced that now i can't remember um but um yeah that's it's still just a very nice casual mindless fun little game nice very Dope. well designed 
Uh, and then I got a wild hair to start playing Minecraft again. Are you a, you a survival or a sandbox boy? Survival. I need goals. And I need yeah. scoring. Otherwise, I lose the motivation to continue. I think I'm sandbox because for me, Minecraft is an architecture game. And, sure. and, and I have done that in survival mode. And there is, there is a little bit of a reward where it's like, I built this be and I had to get all the resources for it and everything. But I'm at the point how many times I've played Minecraft that I'm just like, I have a crazy idea. I want to build mm. the library of Alexandria, you know, and then I'll do that yeah. in sandbox and stuff. I feel like if if I'm playing survival, I'm doing the like smaller version of that where it's like, I want to make a really cool house. And then if I'm doing yeah. uh, creative, it's like I want to build something huge and make it look cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've been meaning to play Minecraft again because it's good. And they've added a shit ton of stuff since the last time I played it. Yeah, that's the other thing is I was like, I just want to kind of just see what's there. I do think there's a problem where even though they've added so much new stuff, I still feel like I'm trapped in like the same three biomes. Mm -hmm. Like I have to go yeah. so far out of my way to discover the new stuff. Um, but uh, I did find uh, cherry, cherry blossom trees brought some Ooh, back. Yeah. Ooh, my, that's nice. Starter village. Uh, question. Have either of you beaten Minecraft survival? By what metric? I've killed the Ender Dragon I think it's, before I think, on a previous I think, survival. Yeah, I think that's killing Ender Dragon in survival. Okay. Yeah, because I know they've added like newer like end game stuff. Oh, I don't count that. But um, so I, then yes, I have beaten Minecraft. I've never done it legitimately, and it's because by when they added that, I was years and years into Minecraft, and at that point, I was kind of past survival. I can't. So I've never done it. I literally can't remember if I have or not. I have done it and it was pure. I, I've never like I don't really seek out that end game stuff because I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not playing it for like the adventure of it. I'm playing it for kind of that the you know, the dig craft construct loop. Um, yeah, but one one survival world I just stumbled into while I was mining stumbled into a stronghold and I was like, oh, this is where that is. I know that this is how I get to the ender dragon. Let me just make a landmark so that I know where this thing is and then I can come back to it when I'm ready. Um, so that was the only time that I've done it um, completely by accident. And probably gotcha. like six or seven years ago. Uh, nice. Speaking of accidents, Ian, um, what have you accidentally been playing this week? I have. OK, first of all. I did not accidentally shoot any civilians. Will did. I, Ian's been oh. playing the anti woke games. OK, multi time, multiple times. First of all. That applies to both your game, both these games, <laughs> which is very funny. That's uh -oh. true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, and second of all. <laughs> Hey, don't be a civilian. Uh, that's all I can say. Enlist today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, Will, myself, and uh, Will's brother, Zach, have been playing Ready or Not. Uh, th look, the easiest way to describe this, if you ever played SWAT 4, this is the sequel to SWAT 4. Uh, SWAT 4 is basically you are a first person shooter you load into a map it's a SWAT type situation and it's you and your SWAT team whether that's actual other players or your AI players and you are having to slowly tactically clear a house or building or dangerous situation and it's very intense it's very much an open door there's a guy oh god and then there's civilians and there's you have to restrain people you have to if they don't shoot at you, you can yell at them and try and get them to drop their weapon and you'll get extra points for that and stuff. Uh, let me just say at the top, a cab. This this is a very cop friendly game. Actually, I don't know that I would say very. I feel like. I feel like, OK, first of all, if you're a video game about cops. I don't know, Will, how do you feel about this? Because this doesn't feel like a thin blue line game no. because they, they could be more over the top with it. Yeah, but it feels very like like 80s and 90s. This is what you yeah. thought SWAT team was like. This is what's yeah. like. It doesn't have like I'm sure if there were there was storyline and characters, you would get a lot more of that stuff. But because yeah. it's just a simulator, you don't get a lot of that 
baggage when it comes to it. Yeah. And I will also say it like made me realize not I obviously it doesn't explain a lot of things bad cops do, but like in the game you restrain everyone, civilian or combatant yeah. and everything. And the civilians are even like, "Hey man, why the fuck are you restraining me? It's the other guy." blah blah blah. And like I think one of the characters explained it or it's in the tutorial something, which is like you have to restrain everyone because you're going into an unknown situation and you have no idea who the bad guys are. Like you don't know yeah. anything. You're the clear out team. So like I was like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense when you're like if you're thinking that all the time, like shit can happen. And like, I'm, that's not the greatest thing. Like cops need to learn when to turn that on and off. But like in those situations, it makes sense. Um, and I was like, that just made me be like, oh yeah, maybe there should be some yeah. more psychology training in, in the cops. But uh, I came to the conclusion. I was like, oh yeah, it makes sense why they're restraining all these people anyways. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I, I don't think this isn't a like, aren't cops the most amazing badasses in the world aren't they saving us every day like it's not that it's more of like do you remember that movie like, like do you remember seven when they go to find the the uh sloth guy like that's what that's what i want to play i want to yeah. be one of those SWAT yeah. guys so you said you said a sim and i think that's a good way to put it is that it is a swat simulator game it does it is a little bit more on the actiony side you know because there's a lot of there's a situation where they're like there's a situation where they're like, hey, this guy called 911, said he shot his mom and he's about to shoot himself and his brother. And you're like, OK, and you roll up to the apartment building and guess what? There's like a a crypto lab run by a gang on the second floor. So what should have been like a one shooter? I don't want to say simple, but a one shooter situation that feels relatively realistic. They felt the need to be like, no, we're going to throw six more bad guys at you because that's more actiony. Right. So it does have that little bit of an element that takes it away from a simulator. But the way that it feels and it plays out and like you're having to stop at doors and check them for booby traps or like drop the mirror underneath to see where they are. And the way that um, as soon as a gunfight starts, as soon as you start shooting at somebody, the way that it represents like the concussive sound and muzzle blast of it is that it like it like applies like a super sharpening filter to the image and some yeah. chromatic aberration so it's just like all of a it's sudden real quick and suddenly it's, looks like a vhs awesome. high quality vhs camcorder and you're just like is this real yeah. am i did i wake up in real life all of a sudden <laughs> it's terrifying yes. so it's one of those things where it's like it's like Yes, a cab. You got to be careful playing this game. Don't fall for cop propaganda, etc. But this isn't fully cop propaganda. It feels more like passive propaganda. It feels like it feels like they never thought about a cab or the the repercussions of a police state, and they were just like, let's make a police game. So it's yeah. not pro cops, but it's but it's ignoring some of this anti cop stuff. But that being said. It's a fucking fantastic SWAT game, right? Will isn't it really yes. good? It, it is. It is fantastic um yeah i feel like you're saying it's like when they like hey we're making this historically accurate uh like european game and it doesn't have black people in it and then everyone's like yeah. comes after them and they're like ah and so like it feels like it's just not like yeah it's it's the, it's not the woke. Not, it's, yeah it's the, not woke. yeah it's not woke but they're like they're not there to do like propaganda in either direction they're just like hey we're really nerdy about cops we're making a cop game yeah um or we're really nerdy about medieval bohemia we're making that like so it just feels like that pure exactly. passion uh and 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 just like the bohemia game like it still gets caught up in controversy because yes. it's about cops um it, it feels is, like it feels like when when you have game developers that are like look our game's not political and it's like okay look all games are political all art is political to an extent part of it is is it deliberate or not and it with this game it feels like there are no deliberate politics in it even though yeah. as a cop game it, it it does have a political slant to it um but yeah it's just it does a lot of cool stuff like we we uncovered in the tutorial when you're in your team you can press the t button and you get a picture in picture from your teammates helmet cam Mm, and uh and that good. also works in multiplayer so will and i were using it where like he'd be on a different angle and i would be facing a different direction and he'd be like oh i see somebody over there and i would just look at his helmet cam in the corner and be like oh okay so he's looking at that tree over there it's so much um, better with describing like because if you're looking two different ways in the same room it helps you form yeah, like hard. that mental 3d picture uh when you can yeah. see the other person's perspective 
especially when when all of a sudden you just hear oh god and then you hear gunshots you can look up and see oh they're shooting somebody at the end of the hallway so now i can go around and also, stuff so ian has never been more mad in the game in a long time because yes. Yes. every single we were like oh let's just kick through doors shoot guys everything and there's one map Every single, almost every single door had a booby trap, like IED on it. And so yeah. it never happened to me. It was always Zach and Ian would, okay, peek the door. Okay, open, boom. And they would both blow up in front of me. <laughs> Immediately die. And I would just be standing there like, do you want me to restart the mission? Yeah. And it I was getting so mad because all the time. Yeah. I was getting so mad because one of the houses was, I don't think it was a meth house. It was just like weird rednecks house. And I was like, okay, got it. Booby traps here make sense. And then another one was, it was like politicians in a hotel room. And these, uh, these, this militant group came in and took them hostage and were shooting people out the window. Those fucking doors were booby trapped as we're going from like the elevator to the main hallway of the hotel. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck you mean they put a booby trap on here? Like they just took hostages 30 minutes ago, you know? <laughs> so anyways, but it, it's really fun. I, I would recommend if you're into tactical games, if you're into Rainbow Six Siege or the classic ones, if you're into uh, Ghost Recon, if you're into SWAT 4, definitely check it if out. If you it's, own it's more really, than one really Tom Clancy novel. Yes. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. I will also say I was really surprised the AI when you're playing with NPCs you click the middle mouse button and you get this full command menu. So so I was and you can have multiple fire teams. So I at one point, I think in the tutorial, you have a fire team of like you have two different fire teams of three people. And so like imagine you're in a room and there's two doors and I was like, you know, red team stage on that door, blue team stage on that door. And then I was like, red team, you know, open the door, flashbang, blue team, you know, kick down door after flashbang and you cue all those commands and you say go. And they do it and they pop it and they go in the room and they clear it and you're watching on the helmet. It's really, really cool. I feel like I'm going to play some more single player of that because it it actually feels really good having NPCs with you that you can give commands to. And they do a good job of going into a room and clearing it out. It's 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 pretty neato. Yeah, it, it, the um, only thing that annoys me about that is it still feels like you're having it still feels like it's separated from you, like you're the person commanding the teams to go in when I want to yeah. be on the team and have it so like can. lock me into it. Oh, you can. So that, so there's a bottom part of it where like, if you're ordering them to open and clear, it's like open and clear, clear with flashbang, clear with, with gas or whatever. And then the bottom one is clear with leader. And what that means is once it's open, whether it's you or them opening, as soon as you go through the door, they will follow you through. Uh, so clear with okay, leader means pretty good. you are I the like lead. That. Yeah, so I did that a couple times and it was pretty good. Um, another game, game that I've talked about before, but played for the first time last night with Will and Zach. Arma Reforger. Will, what are you thinking about Arma Reforger? I, uh, call me a serial killer because I killed, I think, more guys than you and Zach combined. It was like 55 kills. Um, you know, you may be right, because I think I did like 30 and Zach only did like 17. And you did 51, I yeah. think. I murdered. Were they Chinese? They were Russians. It was oh, Russians. No, it wasn't had, Chinese. They had the Chi Chinese. They had flag. the Chinese flag, but but it was Russian. They were Russian. They were Russian. Okay, so I'm more happy. 80s Russian. Um, East Asiatic Alliance. Yes. Uh, so it's yeah, interesting um, because so the games like Reforger itself is set in like during the Cold War and all this, and the game mode we were playing was basically, hey, here's this entire island. This is your operated base. We're going to give you a mission in that operating base to go capture this town. And there's just going to be guys spawning at that town. And basically, the first time we drove up to it, and my truck blew oh, up and Jesus the Hummer blew Christ. up. Um, I was messing around with the Hummer before we left, and I hit the reload button and saw it would take like a minute to reload. And I was like, eh, I'm not staying for this. So I hopped out. So when Ian and Zach were driving through the town, Ian switched to the gunner and it was out. <laughs> So he, he couldn't I, shoot I, I saw a bunch of guys i fired one bullet and then i immediately had to reload and i was just like well and then somebody shot me and i passed out i i it was actually pretty cool so i was in the turret and i got shot and my screen went red and i wasn't dead but it knocked me out for a bit and when i woke up i was on my side in the passenger seat which i, I don't think is a glitch oh. i think it's part of it is like 
I got knocked out of the turret and I came to in inside. That's cool. The Humvee and I was like, that's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, but basically we ended up uh, some of us had snipers and we got up to the ridge and we're like shooting down in the town. And it was just like it was the perfect uh, like shooting range for like really dialing it. I feel like I killed more guys than I ever did in Arma 3 um yeah because i found it, just it feels... so hard to shoot people in that game and this game gives yeah. you a little bit more feedback it's a more refined armor system uh and it just oh, it felt so good and i yeah. legitimately really want, want to play again uh, i was having a blast yeah. it's also fuck that game is gorgeous like absolutely gorgeous like when we started we basically had like what was saying our, our respawn our little operating base and I look over and there's a there's a field with with a flowing glass flowing grass through it. And then there was a, a far tree line and I saw the bright orb of the sun coming up over the tree line and like God rays coming towards us. And I was like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. And it was and it looked so good because like I, I immediately like pulled out my compass and I was like, oh, that's the east. It's sunrise. And the sun was slowly rising throughout the whole mission. And we were like using it. We we're like, OK, go towards that tree line. You know, there's the sun. And it just it like Arma 3 is a is an OK looking game. It's definitely aged a bit. There's like lack of detail and it can feel a little empty. But like going through the trees and getting all these nice shadows and even just crawling through the grass and seeing this like pretty dense grass and i'm like trying to like maneuver through it to get the right shot so i can be prone in the grass but the grass isn't blocking my my view it game's just fucking gorgeous i i can't wait to play more of this with you and then just remember that the whole premise of armor reforger is this is their their open beta basically for the engine and the system that they will then eventually build armor for on so like the series it i i can't remember i posted in the discord we didn't talk about it in the local chat Arma 3 recently had the most sales in one day than it's ever had in the history of the game. Like the Arma series is just popping the fuck off and Reforger is a big part of that as well. Is um, Arma 4, is that going to be like the how modern Arma 3 was when it came out? Is it they're just going to do more modern stuff or would they, they set it really... somewhere? I don't think they've said anything about it. It's just that there is an Arma 4. We're not ready to for it yet. So Arma Reforger is our way of putting this in front of the community. Because because you know about this, but for for Jake and the and the listeners, the Arma series for for the first couple games, they really leaned into, hey, we're going to have a campaign, right? And Arma 3, they were like, we're going to provide DLC. But they pretty quickly realized that what makes these games great is not the shit that they put out. It's what the community does. Right. And so the whole premise of Armory Forger was like, we're going to put this in front of the community. It's going to give the mod makers, the people making assets, the people porting in, you know, like the Taliban, uh, 40s Nazis, etc. Porting all this stuff is going to give them plenty of time to import those assets and get them running and create custom scenarios, et cetera, so that that's all going to be ready by the time Arma 4 comes out. So I don't know what Arma 4 is, but it's cool to know that day one Arma 4 is not going to be just what Bohemia Interactive puts into it. It's going to have this huge fucking mod community behind it already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was fun. I, I can't wait to play again. Um, and how's how's good old Fallout New Vegas going? Uh, it's good. I um I I'm having so much fun in in Freeside. Freeside, God, Freeside. The thing about Freeside that feels is so that with the roller coaster. No, no, that's prim. no free. Freeside is the poor version of New Vegas. It's like around New Vegas. It's right it's where the king okay. lives and all that. Yeah. Um, I was walking around Freeside and I was like, this is such a cool environment. And then I started getting into the story beats and meeting a lot of characters there, and I was like. There's so many cool factions here and it feels lived in. It feels like a real place with real people having real problems and concerns and interacting with each other in real ways. And I immediately thought about fucking Fenway Park from Fallout 4. And I was like, Bethesda looked at Freeside and was like, oh, cool place. Let's do that in Fallout 4 with Fenway Park. And they completely forgot any of the shit about having NPCs that are nice in there, cool stories, different factions, etc. And it was just so funny to have that like, like immediate realization where I'm like, everything that makes this so cool, Bethesda just looked at it and took like the basic wrong fucking lesson, which was just like cool location and didn't do any of the lake work. So New Vegas continues to be awesome. I will say I did finally start 
Honest Hearts, which is one of the DLC. I did a chunk of that, and that's in uh, Zion in Utah. Uh, it kind of sucks, honestly. Not not a big fan of it, but uh, I'm going through it. I think Having Honest fun. Hearts... I need to scroll back to what I said, but I think Honest Hearts... I think I just like the fact that the map is cool, like being in Zion and stuff, but I don't remember the story yeah, it's being different. Like super fun. It is different. Yeah, I think that's why I liked it so much. It just feels like a really different location, um, kind of the way yeah, Big just, Empty does. It, yeah, it's just the map is ugly, though. That's the problem. It just doesn't look good. And then it has this whole, like, white people doing Native American story vibe to it where you're just like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh-oh. But uh, I am I am still enjoying it. Still a great good. game. This is this is the first time that I've been like, eh, not a big fan of this. It's not bad or terrible. I'm just like, eh, I think they misstepped here, which is crazy to be nine, ten hours into a game. And and that kind of be the first time where you're like, oh, I think they made a mistake here. Yeah. Um, great. Well, um, speaking of Obsidian, I have started and beaten a game in between uh episodes of local chat. Uh, 27 hours and 10 minutes it took me to defeat this game. It is called Knights of the Old Republic, the Sith Lords 2, Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords, starring George Lucas. Um, it is by Obsidian. It is the second Knights of the Old Republic game, in case you didn't pick up on that, uh, which Bioware before made the Star first Wars one. It's before Star I... Wars got woke. I never... It's going to sound crazy. I never played KOTOR, KOTOR 2. I guess I never realized that Bioware was only one and Obsidian did the second one. I thought they were both Bioware. That's why they're the kings of sequels. That's why, uh, that's why Outer, World, Outer World 2 is going to be good. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. Um, uh, question. Yes. I've heard this game is nigh on unplayable in modern ways. Um, so how did you play this and how was the experience? I played it on Xbox, the Series X. It's backwards compatible on there, um, the Xbox version. And it is, um, it ran pretty good. So the only issue was for like 20 minutes on Narshada, it would crash every time I tried to walk to the left out of this place uh, when mm. I was talking to a guy. Uh, and then I had one other crash earlier in the game, and I thought that was maybe because I was just keeping it on quick resume. But then after that, I literally had no issues the rest of the game, other than, like, there were, like, some visual things that happened where I'm like, is that supposed to happen? There were a lot of, like, quests that are like, how do I finish this quest? And then I looked it up, and people were like, oh, this game is famously unfinished, so you'll have those quests in your quest lock, and you won't be able to finish them. And I'm so angry. I finished every oh. single one of those fucking quests, so I don't know what people are angry about. I just couldn't finish them when I was leaving Narshada, which you can. There is a way to do that. Um, and I was just yeah. like, okay, fuck you. But other than that, um, it was just mostly visual and a couple of things. It, the ending is extremely unfinished. Uh, they were rushed at the end of that game, famously which is why it's so bad. There is a PC thing that adds a bunch of stuff to it that makes it way more playable, way more stable, bug fixes and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I obviously did not have that on the Xbox. Um, but overall, I absolutely love the game. I rate it currently at a 9 out of 10. Uh, it is really well done. It is, it is, and this might be recency bias, not towards the game, but towards reality, because it felt so good to just drink some Star Wars, some good fucking Star yeah. Wars that didn't have anything yeah. to do with any of the fucking other people in Star Wars. Um, it, it it begins cryptically. All the characters are shades of gray. There's like rarely a good person or, or a super, super bad person. The 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 villains are just in, so well done uh and terrifying and and crazy in some ways where you're just like piecing things together there's characters who show up and you're like yeah i'm never gonna trust you and then i use them the entire game and i brought them all the way to the light side and there's other characters who i thought were good and ended up being bad um my only issues with it is is still that combat system is it's like active 
turn-based sort of system, but managing like your shield. The, they put the shield system on your shoulders, uh, and you can have a different shield on each shoulder, and they they block different things. But you have to manually turn them on. And when the shield runs out of hit points, it turns off. And then you're like quickly trying to have your characters next turn turn it on so uh, they don't get hit by like bludgeoning damage or, or whatever. Um, but it, there is a pause at any point in the game. You, you can just hit the, the left trigger, left uh, bumper, which is the white button. And that would just pause the game and you could do commands and stuff. Uh, so it, it kind of like, nice. it made up for that, but it just wasn't that intuitive. Um, Although at the point when I finally had Force Whirlwind, which is the highest like force push, um, you were just constantly just force pushing everyone around you in a giant circle and they're just dying all the time. So you can just defeat huge uh, piles of enemies. The final, the the second to final boss, uh, you bring their entire health bar down. There's a cutscene, and then they get back up four times. Ugh. And I God. used everything on the first one, so which turned into me realizing I could mind trick the second to final boss, who you think is the final boss, I could mind trick them into thinking I was their friend. And nice. I did that, I recorded it because I thought it was so crazy. I did it three or four times, so I'd mind trick him, he's my friend, I, and I just pla planted uh, frag mines around him. And then he would he would snap out of it, walk into the frag mines, cut scene to speech text, start up again. I would mind trick him, do that, and just rinse and repeat. And then even the final one, uh, I ran out of mines, so I was just force choking him over and over again, and it would break his like next turn, so he would never hit me. So he was just like, eh, and then about to hit me, eh. And so I just did that until he died. And then the final boss, I um, sprinted around the arena until she lost track of me. And then I would throw my lightsaber at a distance. And then she'd start running after me. And then I'd sprint around the arena until she lost track of me. <laughs> and I'd throw my lightsaber. And then her second phase, their second phase, sorry, uh, is just floating lightsabers that chase you down. So I had to individually get only one of those to come attack me so I could defeat them. And I was just like, what Jeez. the fuck is happening? Um... I do really want to play through this game a second time on PC and be a bad boy. Um, there are a ton of, there are a couple bad characters I can pick up that I didn't get this time around. Uh, and then there's, oh, there was just, oh, this game's so good. I highly recommend it to anyone. Play the PC version if you don't have an affinity, if you don't own it anywhere. Play in the PC version, get, uh, I think it's, it's like TCM TSL or something like that is the mod that just updates everything and makes the game run well. I played the entire thing in four by three. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, oh, I also was saving constantly. Oh, that's the other thing. That's the other bug I ran into. Uh, the auto saves do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, if you die, I died, went to back to an auto save. I, it deleted all my equipment. Um, I died, oh, went back to an auto save. It brought me and all my characters down four levels. Uh, I was like, what? Like, what is happening here? Um, so I just saved basically every five minutes. And on the Xbox, if you save too many times, it starts telling you you can't save anymore because you ran out of Xbox blocks, which is what the original, like, hard oh, drive yeah. space on the original Xbox was. So I could only have 12 saves. So it was literally just, when I hit to go save, I would just go to the bottom and resave over. And they must have been saves, like, every five to ten minutes. Because I just, there's a lot of traversal in that game, and you don't want to walk all the way back through Korriban for the 10th time. Uh, so you, you tend to save pretty often. But other than that, I, I super enjoyed it. I'm forgetting a bunch of things I think I wanted to mention about it. But bottom line, fantastic Star Wars, fantastic music. You meet tons of alien races uh, and, and go to cool planets. And, and the story's really neat and really ties together in cool ways. You can really see where they're missing things at the end and you want to, but it's also like such a grand story that at the end of it, it's just like, I mean, did you really, and did you really affect the galaxy at all? Like, did any of it really matter? And I thought that was like, uh -huh. I thought that was a kind of cool way to end a Star Wars thing where it's like, yeah, I guess the evil was defeated and you, you found yourself again. And, but like the Republic's still in power. People still hate it. Like these worlds still kind of suck. Um, uh, and it was also a lot more, this game's a lot, very black and white about, uh, Sith and Jedi and dark Jedi. Um, they're just like, Hey, 
the normal people view them all the same. If they're in power, they're in power. If they're not, they're not. Like, we really don't care. Um, also, oh, like, two party system. Old, yeah. Old Republic uh, uh, Mandalorians are really cool too. They have way cooler armor than, like, Boba Fett's armor is cool. And then they gave it to all the Mandalorians. Uh, but in this game, they're like these ancient, like, helmets with, like, these little visors. Uh, and you meet Mandalore. Uh, and he's trying to get Mandalorians back together. And then you can recruit Mandalore. And then if you see Mandalorians on other planets, you talk to them as him. And he recruits them to join his clan on his on his moon. It's nice. so cool. It's so good. There's a bunch of bonus missions. Uh, and and it's a D20 system, if that makes anyone happy. Uh, it's really neat. <laughs> um, so anyways, I, I suggest checking it out. It took me 27 hours to get through. You could probably get through it in 20 if you didn't do all the side stuff um i really enjoyed it and it and again it holds together i am not doing the will crosby thing and playing uh jade empire immediately after so which is another one of their games um uh, similar to it i don't think obsidian did jade empire i believe it's just bioware um but i played kotor one enough i've never beaten kotor one but it has always failed on me and i refuse to go back to it um waiting for the remake on that one so i think the next time I want to play a Bioware style RPG it will either be my f probably my final attempt at Dragon Age Origins or uh, Jade Empire. Anthem. Oh. Mm. Anthem. Um, I always see it. It's always in my recommended on Games Pass. Game Pass, and Anthem I always is? think to myself, yeah, and I always think, hmm. What if we got really into I Anthem, was... guys? <laughs> I, you know, I thought it was shut down. I don't think it is, but there was part of me that thought it was completely shut down but i guess they just ended they See, just said we're not going to support this anymore part of me wants to be like oh what if we did an anthem series and we played through all the content on anthem and i feel like that would be one stream <laughs> i don't think there's that no, much content in anthem it's not that because I, I played the beta the problem is that it has so much fucking filler so like the map's fairly big and they're just like go over here for your story quest and you do oh. the story quest and it's okay and then they're like to advance, you need to go clear four areas, and then you go do four areas that are boring and the same thing. And then they're like, okay, now go do this. Like, they keep putting artificial gates that are like the FPS version of fetch quest in a way where they're just like go do this monotonous activity 10 times and then you can come unlock the next story beat. And yeah. the combat felt okay. It felt okay to good, but yeah, there was just no I reason to play that game. But yeah. Uh, yeah. That sucks. Anthem. Uh, so yeah, that was the game I played this week. Um, I also started a little bit of Fire Emblem Awakening, but uh, I started it on hard because Jason recommended doing that, and then I. Uh, well, what are you doing, buddy? No, no, Jay I like it. It's I know, I know. In Fire Emblem, you hold the controller, but Jason is the one playing. So, <laughs> so you can't play Fire Emblem on hard, buddy. You're not there. No, I, I, um, I, I've been doing fine in it, but I'm like two missions in and i realized it didn't tutorialize me on anything because hard mode doesn't so i'm gonna go back and start a, oh. a game on easy to get all the tutorial because i'm pretty sure there's things that are happening yeah. that i have no idea are happening like like when i have two characters next to each other it does sort of a support system from seven and eight and like yeah i'm like is it what's affecting this is this like a permanent thing do i have to be cautious about it so i think i'm gonna go replay the uh the intro on easy just so i can get the tutorial because I desperately need to know if I'm fucking things up. But other other than that, it, it's pretty good. Um, Jason said the easy mode for our, even like normal people in that game is laughably like pretty easy. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I went with hard, but I, I haven't got very far in it. I think my next game, you know, I think it's the year it came out last year, two years ago. I think Resident Evil Four. I think I'm gonna go to Resident Evil Four. The remake. The remake. Um, part of me really wants to play the Resident Evil 3 remake. Hey, I have that if you want it. What, the 4 remake? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just I, remembered I, I bought it and barely played it. <laughs> um, I was still working then, so I'm pretty sure I own it on PC and Xbox. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, don't worry. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to hit that. I've been watching old Giant Bomb of, uh, Abby playing through Resident Evil 2, and I've played both claire i don't know if i did claire b or leon and claire a in that game 
But uh, I kind of want to either play Resident Evil 3 or Resident Evil 4. And I think I might as well go play Resident Evil 4. Because it's pretty separated. So. so we'll see. We'll see if we get to it. Uh, those are the video games we have been playing this week. Uh, if you would like to play a video game this week, uh, write a postcard to 1600 Pennsylvania. Tell Joe. And uh, he'll, he'll get back to you. So thanks. Um, what new games do you think Joe has played? Um... I don't know. I have a letter from Joe Biden about video games, and he didn't say. Um, I wrote to Joe Biden in high school about video game violence and how it makes kids want to kill people. Good. Uh, no. Is this a bit? <laughs> no, no. I, I, I could grab the letter right now if you'd like me to. And he wrote back to me uh, in high school. He was vice president then, so it's not really worth much um, on the market. But he wrote back to me about video game violence. Oh. Yeah, that's right. You were in high school then. Okay, I got you. Yeah, 2013 was the year I wrote that. That's when I graduated. Oh, I keep forgetting the age difference here because I graduated yeah. in 08. Yeah, you're 40? You know, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to it. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll be 30 this kill year. Myself. This is terrifying. <laughs> so. uh, time to kill myself. Uh, that's past. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about the news. Ian, take it away. Talk about the news. Yeah, let's kick it off with some... Um, you know what? Let's start it off with... Oh, fuck. Uh, let's start off with the business news. Let's start off with the small one. Sony Music Entertainment Japan, Aniplex, and Pocket Pair have jointly established something called Pal World Entertainment, in which they... Which is, quote a joint venture that will be responsible for developing the reach of the intellectual property and for ex expanding commercial business endeavors, including the global licensing and merchandising activities associated with PAL world outside of the game. End quote from Gamatsu. Uh, are you guys excited for some, some PAL world merchandise and movies and TV shows and shit? I, I mean, I guess, I guess this also means that Nintendo's, internal investigation into whether or not copyright infringement had occurred has not advanced there was there was never any peep from nintendo i believe uh i believe pocket pair recently said we never heard anything from nintendo so yep. uh, you're right there probably wasn't an, an, an internal conversation but there was nothing ever publicly yeah. made accused filed etc i did i saw uh uh unhinged response to this of being someone was like oh well this is why you don't support indie games because then they sell out when they get big Jeez. <laughs> what? i don't what? think i what don't think this was an indie about? game either because i think well, pocket pair was but but anyways yeah i honestly i'm okay with this and here's here's why i'm okay with this i have been to target and i have seen five nights at freddy's pajama pants I have seen Hello Neighbor toys. I have seen Roblox action figures. Why are you hanging out in the kids section? <laughs> <laughs> you don't go to the you don't go to the toy aisle at Target every now and no, then. No, but check you out were. What, what I assume they were toys adult they got. Freddy uh, pajamas. <laughs> Minecraft creeper backpack. Yeah, they were. No, they were. You know how I know that? I, I slightly lied. I didn't see those at Target. They were Victoria's about Secret. <laughs> No, I, I want to say about 10 years ago at Christmas, my mom gifted some pajama pants to my brother-in-law. And when he pulled them out, he's like, oh, I love pajama pants. And they were Five Nights at Freddy's. And I was like, where did you get those? And she goes, they were on sale what? at Walmart. And I'm like, yeah. So my point just being there are shittier games getting merchandising deals and merchandise that doesn't make sense. Like, I don't want a Hello Neighbor action figure. Right. I don't want pajama pants with five you nights at Freddy's on it. The pedophile from Hello Neighbor. <laughs> no, but if you give me some of them Pal World plushies, if you give me a weird little Pal World anime where it's Pokemon with guns True. and they're doing weird things each episode, this is fucking ripe. Like, if anything, this is probably going to be better than the game. And the game was pretty good in the first place because this Pokemon is Pokemon Black Hawk down. Yeah, this IP is ripe for merchandising. I'm Can ready they... for it. I want Power World to team up with Robot Chicken and make a TV show in the style of that Pokemon no, Netflix Cartoon puppet Network one. Got gutted. Yes. Yes. Really good. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited about this. I feel like this is an IP where it's not like 
it's not like last of us where they're going to be real dicks about it and be like no we have to take this seriously we have to respect the ip world no fuck it yeah it's a cool ip and they have no respect for it so yeah milk that shit do it all over the place i don't care um let's talk about game pass uh fuck i should have looked up a better document for this okay Game Pass, there are some changes to the tiers. There are some pricing changes. Here's what you need to know, according to WindowsCentral.com, which uh, then has 12 bullet points on how these are changing, because this is complicated. But essentially, let's go through it. Xbox Game Pass for console is soon going to no longer be available. Okay, they're replacing that with Xbox Game Pass Standard which is more is $15 a month. It gives you access to the back catalog, but it doesn't give you cloud gaming and it doesn't give you day one games. Game Pass Ultimate gets you what it currently gives you, which is the back catalog of games, day one games, PC Game Pass and cloud gaming. But it's going to be going up to $20 per month. PC Game Pass is going to be $2 more, so it'll be $12.99, but the features stay the same. And then the Xbox Game Pass Core, which is basically just Xbox Live, it's just giving you multiplayer, is going to remain at $10 per month. Those are the changes. A lot of people are upset about them. How do you guys feel about this? Uh, You know, it kind of sucks that prices are going up, but I feel like Game Pass is the one thing I do pay for that I don't mind continuing to pay for. Uh, But I am... Like I, I want I hope I see more things where it's like I'm getting a, I'm already getting a bang for my buck, but I hope I get a little bit more bang inside my buck. It's it's difficult to square this price increase with the fact that they shuttered so many studios recently, where it's mm-hmm. it's not like they're increasing the price so that they can dump that back into into like actively games actively in development. It just feels like we're increasing value for the shareholders. Yeah, potentially. I, I think for me, there's there's two things here. One is the price increase. And if if the price itself was just increasing, I could I could understand that. I could say, look, I, I get it. Uh, inflation, market uncertainty, the uh, gaming market is contracting a little bit after kind of the covid bump. Um, so I understand needing to increase the prices. A lot of other services are doing that. What I don't understand is how they have made it even more confusing. Like that was the number one complaint about PlayStation Plus when they switched over to a catalog system. They made it way too fucking confusing. I still don't know what PlayStation Plus tier (laughs) I'm on because the tiers don't the names the names don't make any sense. And at least with Game Pass, right? There was a little bit of confusion, but it was all at the low end, right? It was like, if you want just multiplayer, you can't, you can kind of get live, but you can't. So you got to buy Game Pass Core. And it was like, no, 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 look, it's easy. If you have an Xbox console, then buy Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. If you don't have a console and you just have a PC, then just buy PC Game Pass, right? That's it. You get everything. Dunzo. This change makes it more fucking complicated. And that's disappointing. Um, And I think for me personally... I've been subscribed to Game Pass since day one. I think I'm going to turn off my monthly subscription because I I don't play twenty dollars worth of Game Pass games every month, and and I don't pay t- I don't play two hundred and forty dollars worth of Game Pass games over the year yeah. when it and was cheaper than that. Day one's not going to be included at a reasonable yeah, tier f- for for the lower price. Yeah, so so I think they have made this confusing and they've bumped the price to such an extent that I'm going to go from. I'm going to stay subscribed all the time because I know I'll have it to I will turn it on when I specifically want to play a game or two and then turn it off. And that's upsetting. I I do think, though, I want to hear you guys take on this. People are acting like this is people are acting like this is some huge fuck up on behalf of Xbox. Like this is a betrayal of what they've said about Game Pass and the Xbox ecosystem and what they're trying to do, that this is different and worse than PlayStation Plus uh, or or Ubisoft Uplay or some of the other uh, services that have done something similar where they have day one on a separate tier or they don't offer day one or they have have confusing tiers. I, I don't agree with that. This just feels like Xbox was ahead of the game and now they've fucked up such that they are equal in the game. What, what do you guys think? 
I mean, I think the PlayStation stuff is awful and terrible, and I think they don't offer really anything great on that service. Um, I think yeah. Xbox offers a great amount of modern, relatively new, older, and old games. I think they have a fantastic spread of video games. I just, every time I look at PlayStation Plus, it just feels like games from 10 plus years ago, and that's it. I rarely see and a modern game. And a lot of them are, are cloud. A lot of them are not yeah. play on your and console. That's the other they, problem. It's that cloud access only. PlayStation 3 cloud thing sucks. I, I want to play PlayStation 3 yeah. games. Uh, and then I just think the other thing... Uh, so I think on that front, I think Game Pass knocks them out of the water. I will say this... Like, the day one on Game Pass isn't a phrase they can use anymore. Because that Game Pass plan has the no day one yeah. games in it. So, like, they should have made... They should have made whatever tier didn't have the day one games, like the X, like bring back Xbox Live Gold. Yeah, don't I guess. call it Game Pass. Yeah, so don't you call can it Game Pass it because yeah. you just like knocked yeah. yourself of, out of that tagline, which was gr a great tagline, uh, and and like yeah. really got people in that ecosystem. Uh, and I think I think that's the biggest downfall from this. And on top of your thing saying, why are you making it more confusing, like? I don't think you needed to supplement these tiers without the day one thing and all that stuff in the first place. I think if you just increased all the tiers that yeah. are currently there, I think you would have been okay. And I and it feels like this went to a meeting where one like equal amounts of people wanted one thing and the other equal amounts wanted the other, and they compromised with this terrible, terrible system they've come I, up with. I think, I I think it did go to a meeting, but the meeting was a bunch of marketing execs who watch a lot of tiktok who are just like oh no the strategy now is good better best you offer three plans you offer a cheap shitty plan you offer an okay middle of the road plan and you offer an awesome high-end plan right and that's what they've done they've done core they've done game pass and now they've got ultimate and they were probably like oh but if we bump it up to 20 dollars, we've really got to offer something at like that 10 to 15 dollars a month because there's people who can who that's their price point they won't go to 20 and it's like it, I kind of understand that, but you don't have enough here and you and your whole selling point is day one that you can't make that one of the tiers. Yeah. And so they just they just kind of goofed this. But but yeah, I, I agree with you. Game Pass is still a good value. It's just now equally as good as the other systems because of the, the price, et cetera. And it's. I think they're going to lose subscribers like like I can afford I can afford twenty dollars a month easy and that's not me bragging that's me telling you this is this is Damn, a bad Mr. enough Money decision over here <laughs> this is a bad enough decision that I'm literally going to go in and shut off my game pass for the first time in years just so I don't spend 20 bucks a month it, it, this is just I don't know what they're doing here it's, yeah. it feels a little desperate it does and I mean I hope We'll see what happens. Uh, but I bet they're doing this so when people sign up to play Call of Duty, they are playing for the day one. They're paying for the day one version and all that. Yeah. I think that's... They just want and to that's dumb. that. Yeah. That's dumb. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. I do want to shout out a quote here from uh, Raleigh McLeod from Aftermath.site. He has a fantastic quote here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of it anymore, but he basically says... Uh, quote, you know this, but we're seeing these two processes everywhere, ads and price hikes. And then he talks about Netflix, Amazon, Google search being more useless, Discord stuff with garbage. We've got uh, Paradox and Team Fortress 2 and other live service games that are reducing their offerings and adding more microtransactions, etc. And he says uh, at the end, quote, things aren't for you anymore. They're for shareholders who don't care if their product is good or useful or if you even understand what you're paying for. If Xbox is any indication, I'd argue they see this obfuscation as a bonus. What matters to these people is that they can keep their offerings just functional enough to keep you paying or failing that keep them just essential enough to feel like there's nowhere else to go. And so I think this is indicative not of an Xbox problem. It's an indicative of the modern digital ecosystem. And that, that's just to, to end it real quick. That's why I didn't understand all the hate against Microsoft and Xbox for this. You should be hating on a shitload of companies for this. Yeah. It's not an Xbox problem. 
Yeah. I always, anytime I see a story like this, I think of that one. I don't know if it's like a New Yorker cartoon or something, but it's like a, a guy in a suit sitting by a fire with like a group of kids. And there's like a burned out city in the background. And he's like, sure, we destroyed the world but for a brief, beautiful moment. We created a lot of value for shareholders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, man, man. I, the line that hits me the hardest there is the line I think about every day now which is the uselessness of Google search. It is so bad now. Yeah, it is bad. so bad. Even before it. they added the bad oh, AI. Oh, before they added the bad AI, for sure. It's worse now, but it is it is so bad. I'm, I, I get Jeeves, what's he doing? Is he still around? <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, speaking of things that are bad, let's talk about layoffs. We got two big layoffs this past week. Uh, first up, the Australian versions of Vice, Refinery29, Gizmodo, Lifehacker, and Kotaku have closed uh, as part of the uh, pedestrian group restructuring. Uh, they said they will have up to 40 jobs will go across the business, and unfortunately that has hit a lot of those uh, digital publishing websites like Lifehacker and Kotaku. I know Kotaku Australia was well known for some fantastic reporting and games news there. Uh, the other one, Will, I'm so sorry, buddy. I saw this. Piranha Bytes. When did you see this? <laughs> when I opened today? the news document today. Oh my, how did you miss this? Will, Piranha Bytes, the studio behind Gothic, Risen, and Elix, has shut down. Rip. Rip. Uh, fuck Bethesda. They should be shutting down. Piranha I, you know, should live. <laughs> Fuck. You know, you know, I didn't want to say that because I thought that may be too extreme. But <sighs> we, we talked about this in Starfield. I was struggling to define Starfield and what's wrong with Bethesda. And you nailed it specifically, which is that Bethesda makes janky ass games over and over again. Like they're a fucking double A Eastern European studio. And at least those studios are making something interesting and unique and weird. And Bethesda's not doing that anymore. So I think you're right. This unique little gem of a studio should live and Bethesda needs to be shut down. I'm so mad. I, I have so many memory. I have special associated memories with Elix, mostly because we did that duo review of it and how yeah. terrible it was. But the game has so much heart and all of their games have so much heart and they're just Oh, they're just beautiful specimens. I really want to play Elix, Elix 2. I didn't finish one, but I would jump into two. It's just, it's just, they're, those games are chef's kisses as far as middle yeah. of the road RPGs. They're just, they, oh, they're Extra like, life. they're the person that you should be like, yeah, buddy, you did it. Like, you nailed it, man. And like, yeah. you're just so proud and of it, them. But it's, it's not, it's not just that they messed up it's that in the act of messing up they have made something very unique it and interesting back around yes. yeah where They're you're like, like the tommy we so of <laughs> your uh, yeah. euro rpgs <laughs> yeah it's like it's like you it's like you messed up but you did it in such a way that it's kind of working like what's going on here you know um so yeah, that's uh, that brings our estimated 2024 games industry layoff total to 10,800. That's crazy. Uh, we should buy them yeah. out. Piranha yeah, bites. Piranha bites. How much money do you think we need for that? I don't this know. Says, We're like nine subscribers from 8,000. It says according to an information provided to us, the project was expected to be financed in the amount of three million euros. I think their next project. We could raise three million, three million dollars. We could, we, we, yeah, you can get a loan for that. Yeah, Elix three guys. Oh, they are in three Germany like... though. I was hoping that I was hoping they were more Eastern okay. European because then, because then like Romanian, Ukrainian, because then we could get them dirt fucking cheap. That's uh, for there's extenuating circumstances. <laughs> No, I mean Ukraine, yes, but Romania, etc. No, they've always been cheap. That's that's the big thing in software right now is. There are lots of companies in Romania and Ukraine that are literally just companies of software developers and they just go to Western software companies and they say, hey, how about you contract our guys? It's like a tenth of the price of a U.S. developer. They're like, yeah, sure. And they do that. And they're great devs. It's just uh, cheap. Yeah. Um, I've never played any of their other games. I should. I own a bunch of them. Um, but yeah. I'm sad. 
That means that Gothic 3 is never coming out. Unless someone else is working on it. Might Probably not. Let's talk about two game announcements this week. Uh, first up, we have Planet Coaster 2 has been announced on Steam. And I think the big announcement here is that it has water features now. Uh, and then also, Disney announced a pixel RPG for mobile, which looks a little bit like a Final Fantasy-esque game. It's, uh, I believe they it's in... That already. It's called Kingdom Hearts. Uh, you know, yes, but this is more like SNES style. I'm kind of interested in this. I love the idea of a a mobile SNES JRPG. Doesn't that sound great? If it's good. <laughs> yeah. Sounds okay. I'm worried that as a mobile game, it's going to be chock full of Michael transactions. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I know there's some images of it and stuff. It's got a, a little bit of the I wouldn't call it HD 2D, but it's like sprite characters. Sick. Octopath. Backgrounds. Yeah, so it, it, I, it I think you're right to be concerned about that. But there's part of me that's like, what if they just didn't do that? Right. What if they just made a what solid if? little fucking RPG game? What if know? they didn't think about the value they could create for shareholders? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I will say Gothic <laughs> one remake is being made by someone else. So that's still still hopefully. Coming oh, out. OK. Gotcha. So wait, if Go. we couldn't buy out Piranha Bytes, could we buy the rights to Elix? <gasps> oh, I wonder. Oh, yeah, for sure, buddy. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> How, how do you even you have to get like a lawyer to look that stuff up? Don't you? I, I was just about to say there needs to be an there needs to be an eBay for IP rights because I would go fucking hog wild. On <laughs> if that. I could buy I emailed Warner Brothers about purchasing the Van Helsing uh, film rights, the huge. Well, we, have to, we also but, uh, have to get the rights to Galactic Empires. I, I mean, need you to own those. <laughs> if I could, I would. But uh, listen, the trail goes cold They're in and dispute. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't think I think honestly, I, I think they dissolved. I don't think anyone owns it now because uh, the artists retain their rights to all the images. The so art. art. But you but mean the, like yeah. the rule book and everything the is rule just book like in the public domain? The trademark. I don't think so. I mean, a lot of that stuff was stuff that entire team wrote for the Star Trek game and then just switched over to their own thing. So they already yeah, stole a lot of it anyways, anyways but. But yeah, it's a great video. Uh, where's that guy now? If only, <laughs> only we knew. Actually, this next bit, bit of news will really help Carl Schulte, Schulte out for his theme parks. We already we already said Planet Coaster 2. Oh, I missed announced. it. Sorry, apologies. Which I don't actually listen to you guys. Tycoon three games to include proper water attractions. So Planet Coaster I'd 2 like is already in your head. I think I played Planet Coaster is the one where you have to like hide the background stuff as well, right? Like the background operations and everything. So. Or is that Park Architect? So, Park Architect yeah. not also do that? Oh, oh that I think it's Park Architect. Maybe Park Architect. Architect. Be Park you know, Architect. less excited yeah. for this game now because I like Park Architect, I think more. Yeah. Um, that's I think nuts. the problem with these games is that they're not Roller Coaster Tycoon. That's the problem. Yeah. They come I've along been and they're like, like oh, we're going to make another game in that genre. And it's like, buddy, there was no genre. It was just those games. Yeah. You know, that's it. And I've been really playing uh, open RTC two okay, off and on past couple weeks. It's still really good. And I still follow that guy. We highlighted that. Uh, well, there's the the 1998 builder that you highlighted in the like Sim City ish builder where you're it's like World of Coast, ah. but their houses and stuff. And then there's that other guy. I don't know if we had it on here, but he it's the parking lot simulator where you're just yes. like turning it in, but it's also that roller coaster tycoon style. So I'm very excited. Um yeah, it'll be fun. Uh you want to do your little, little content call out here? Yeah, content call out. Um you know, let's do a quick one and then I'm gonna geek out on you guys for a little bit about the second one. So content call out is our new section where we talk about games and tech. Uh, little pieces of content that have been made along the web that we want to call out and say, hey, go look at this. It's really cool. One of them is the Washington Post did a lifestyle piece on The Sims and basically said, quote, see how The Sims helped these players change their real lives. And it's a really nice little touching article interviewing people who are either obsessed with The Sims or they or they use The Sims in some way to improve their life. And they have like 
multiple examples here. So they have, you know, this, uh, these friends that opened a bookstore and they realized they could design their bookstore in the Sims first to get the right feel for it and then go buy similar furniture in the real world. Um, there's other people who uh, are Sims creators. And so they talk about how they stream the Sims to make a community. There's one person who, um, they, uh, grew up in Brazil and for their 11th birthday, they received the game they did not speak any English. They didn't know any English. They kept the game, The Sims, in English while they played it, and they used it to help them learn English and, and you know, get them to adapt to a second language easier. Uh, the, the other thing I really want to shout out for this article, you guys got to check it out, is they did some really cool photography in this game. And basically what they did is each of these little people, each of their little stories, they have a picture of that person. And then they tried to recreate that shot in The Sims and they have it side by side. And it's really cool. So, for example, one of the later guys talks about how he uh, he used The Sims to pick up a new hobby. He was playing The Sims. He really liked it. He made a version of himself in The Sims and his version in The Sims got really into art and painting. And so the guy in real life was like, hey, maybe I should try painting. And now he has painting as a hobby. And so they have a really cool shot of his character in the game painting in a kitchen. And then they have him in his kitchen in real life painting. So it's just like a really well done, happy little article. Doesn't that sound cool? I'm it looking at the really pictures cool. right now. Yeah. These are, these are Same. good. I mostly yeah, tuned you out because these pictures are just great. They're <laughs> delightful. Yeah. So that's the Washington post. Uh, see how the Sims help these players change their real lives. Uh, Will's going to put the link in the show notes. Yes, I will definitely do that. It's doable. Uh, the other thing, look, I know we're running late, but fuck you guys. I got to talk about this crazy article by Robert Heaton called Pi Sky Wi Fi P Y S K Y W I F I. You guys ever get on an airplane? Oh, I saw and, this. And they say, hey, there's there's free Wi Fi on this airplane or and you go to join it and they're like, well, you can use our website and you can watch videos. But if you want to use the free Internet, you have to pay for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like giving so your phone an guy... STD by connecting to it. <laughs> Yeah. And so this guy basically realized that the free portion of the airplane Internet let him log into his his air airline account and change certain fields, like, for example, his middle name. And then he came up with a very stupid idea, which is he realized if you're on the plane and you connect to the free Wi-Fi and you put text into and you change your middle name on the account to let's say hello how are you then somebody elsewhere on the internet could also log into the same account read what the middle name is and change it to i'm doing fine how are you and save it and then on the plane you could refresh and read the message from the middle name and then he said wait a minute what if i set up a whole fucking structure so that i can very very slowly pass information from the internet through this single text field to you so he basically has two applications an application that lives at home and is constantly listening for a request and grabbing information from the internet and stuffing it into the middle name box and an and an application that lives on your phone or your laptop that connects to the Wi-Fi and reads that That's... information through the middle name. That's and so, so he's I, for, I forgot what he said, but he said it's like really, really slow, but he did get it working so he can like. He, he can do specific requests like he can say, what is the score of this game? And it'll go look it up and send it to him. But he can also try to load like HTML websites and shit. It's just really slow because, you know, if you picture that box maybe has like a 50 character limit. So it's passing information like encoded Jeez. and compressed, but 50 characters at a time. And it's having to like, act back and forth. You know, it can't just grab the information. It has to provide an act to the to the other program oh so it knows God. that it's good and it can send the next code yeah it's fucking wild i love this so much uh it's called pi sky wi-fi p y s k y w i f i from robertheaton.com that will also be in the show notes yeah that's that's wild hey, that's I fucking cool. love it i really like it yeah. that makes me think of when i was a kid oh god i don't think any i don't think my parents watch this uh my mom put a program i don't think it, i can't remember if it was specifically on my laptop or like computers or if it was network based but it was this like canine protection thing that would block and and before you would be like well you're looking at porn and stuff it would block like 
random websites all the time because it, it, the filters were terrible at uh -huh. it. And so basically I found out um, if you click in when it blocks the page, if you click the uh, like on on your on an eye on an eye touch phone, if you click the like help uh uh like menu or whatever, uh like the support email link for it, it would bring you to a support page inside its own internet window yes. for the like canine thing, and then you could go anywhere in that window to look at uh, nice. so to look at things. I mean to to do research on Wikipedia. Um and I used to do that a lot. We got five minutes uh, flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was good, quick I mean, it only worked for thirty seconds, which is weird. Um and it was super fun. Uh but that's the first time I felt like a hacker man. Uh so uh I don't know, improve your prevention of me looking at naked Dudes. Wikipedia articles. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, that's gonna be the show. I'm gonna hit the button and we're gonna get the hell. Oh, sorry. Actually, I wanted to show you. This is this is my Joe Biden letter. See? Oh wow. He wrote to me, and I can't show you the full letter because it has my parents' address where they still live. Uh, but it has his little signature. Oh, it has little bite marks from Commander on it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no, those are from Joe. Uh, he still had teeth then. So he wanted to show them off. Uh, I haven't read this letter in a while, but it's like someone else wrote it for sure. Um, anyways, that's going to be the show. Let me hit the button. Oh, I hit the... Wait, I'm back. Oh, sorry, everyone. I hit the end Jeez. show button. So I just went to the end of the show and muted us. Amazing. Um, okay, let me hit the outro button. Uh, folks, we will... Uh, that was uh, that was Love Chat, episode 180. Jake Terrio is here. Uh, I saw that bit you were doing with Waffle in the background and I was trying not to laugh while talking. Um, Ian Gibson was here. I saw that bit where you showed us your penis at, at a certain timestamp and I was trying <laughs> not to laugh. Um, you could see it? <laughs> I'm Will Crosby. We'll be back uh, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. Ian Gibson will be braving the Gobi Desert. What is it? Which desert is it? The Mojave. Mojave the Gobi Desert. desert. Uh, Zion. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he'll be in Zion. Uh, National Park uh, hitting it up with the Mormons uh, we and then uh, nothing this weekend and then hopefully some Fired Emblem on uh, Tuesday and Monday of course will be more Fallout uh, stay tuned for the schedule, join the Discord, all that fun stuff subpixelfilms.com, we'll see you all next week bye